My name is H.J. Goodman, and I'm an author, columnist, and journalist. Hit subscribe right now to this channel. We have some very interesting news. By the way, my Second Amendment channel is going to surprise a great many people. You're going to love what I have in store for everyone in my Second Amendment channel. Um, that is why it is this new location here, and you're going to love, 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 love why all the great things on HA Second Amendment, but also, what do we have here? Definitely check out my article in the Jerusalem Post. Why Democrats? <laughs> my brain's all over the place because I have some pretty good news. Ninth Circuit sides with Trump on environmental waivers for border wall. This is a huge victory for President Trump, but my article in my op-ed in the Jerusalem Post, Why Democrats? Embrace anti-Semitism and anti-Israel bias. Check that out. I'm being proven right every single day. Ninth Circuit sides with Trump on environmental waivers for border wall. One would think the Ninth Circuit wouldn't side with Trump. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled for the Trump administration Monday in a case challenging its waivers to bypass environmental regulations in, construction, in constructing parts of the border wall. The state of California and several environmental groups sued President Trump and the Department of Homeland Security in September of 2017 to stop construction of a border wall prototype and ongoing repairs to 14 miles of an existing barrier in San Diego. So, basically, the Ninth Circuit, Ninth Circuit's three-judge panel ruled two to one in favor of the federal government. Uh, the, the dissenting judge wrote she supported the Trump administration's argument but thought the court lacked jurisdiction to review California's appeal. So, I mean, this is actually, basically, all the judges sided with Trump, um, essentially. Even the one that didn't side stated that, well, you know, this might not be, we might not have jurisdiction. But in terms of Trump's wall, number one, I don't see this from the issue of um, preventing human beings. I, I view it... Because I have friends who are dreamers. I have um, known wonderful people who are undocumented immigrants. My issue is the flow of illegal narcotics, the, the, the flow of uh, the, tra the trafficking of everything from narcotics to um, people. The criminal behavior, if it's prevented, if it stops right at that location it doesn't enter the country the if it if the border wall impedes prevents or stops the flow of fentanyl of heroin or uh, you know cocaine all of these uh, illegal narcotics if the wall works and stops human trafficking all these things if the wall works then i mean wh like what's the moral in the if they voted for a fence if they voted for a fence, what is the um, the issue regarding the morality of this? I don't get it. President Obama deported two and a half million people. Okay. There was a Senate probe that said that his administration allowed children to be sent into the arms of, of traffickers. That was a Senate probe. That's in New York Magazine. So it's like... There is an article everyone should read. Just type in Defense One, John Kelly, General John Kelly, U.S. Southern Command. This is in 2014. Top General says Mexico border security, now existential threat to U.S. U.S. Southern Command's uh, General uh, Kelly calls U.S. border insecurity, Latin America's broken societies, and insatiable American drug use existential threats to national security. A top, a top United States general in charge of protecting the southern border. So this is, okay, when he was in the Trump administration, people were saying, oh my God, he's the adult in the room. Well, he's stating this is a national security issue, an existential issue. Okay, and, and guess who agreed? Bob Menendez. So Bob Menendez agreed with this also. He said it's a national security issue also. See, they can speak about this in a more sober manner when President Obama was in office because Obama was deporting two and a half million people. That's why. Obama was deporting two and a half million people. So it's like when President Obama deports two and a half million people, 
uh, La Raza called him, called him the deporter in chief. Suddenly, it's okay. It's okay, you know, because um, well, uh, you know, it's a Democrat in office, so all the euphemisms fly out the window. In fact, nobody even talks about these euphemisms. The duplicity is it's, it's just unbelievable how the, 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 the Democratic Party works. It's absolutely unbelievable. They deport more, the, the President Obama's administration deported more people, deported more people, more human beings than any other administration ever. And then we have to hear them preach and pontificate. Then we have to hear the preaching and the pontificating. Then we have to hear, oh my God, oh my God. Um, you trump this, trump that. Well, you also presided over the greatest expansion of domestic oil and gas production ever. On climate change and immigration, they were the antithesis of what they claimed to be. The antithesis. They were the antithesis of what they claimed to be. Um, I don't, I do not think that this is very good for Democrats. If you have the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, President Trump on Monday notched a rare victory in the California-based federal appeals court by winning a dispute over the construction of certain barriers along small stretches of the U.S. Uh, border with Mexico. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals affirmed a district court ruling that sided with the Trump administration in a lawsuit challenging... Um, Okay, the, the three-judge panel ruled two, to, ruled two to one, ruled two to one that the Department of Homeland Security (DHS) had broad authority under the Immigration Reform and, and Immigrant Responsibility Act of 1996 to construct wall prototypes, replace 14 miles of primary fencing near San Diego, and replace similar fencing along a three-mile strip close to uh, Calexico, California. Okay. Now, if you say, "Oh my God, H -H, the environmental groups," well, Beto O'Rourke got more money than any other person in Congress, aside from Ted Cruz, from oil and gas lobbyists. Please, the preaching. Oh, my God, the preaching. Oh, the preaching. I'm tired. I'm tired of hearing the nonsense. I'm tired of hearing the nonsense. Um, but this is very interesting. Department spokesman said Monday that Congress has given the executive branch significant authority to build physical barriers on the U.S., U.S. border. Today, the court has affirmed the authority, and, and that is a victory for the Trump administration, for the rule of law, and above all, okay, border security. So, um, Statement of the Hill, Stephen Stafford, a Justice Department spokes, uh, spokesman. Look, when he declares a national emergency, and he, he will, I mean, there's not, there's not a legislative option here. There's no way he's going to get this through Congress because Democrats don't even want Democrats don't even want to negotiate for their constituents. They don't even want to negotiate for the constituents. They don't want to negotiate. I mean, it's like you can actually if you're a Democrat, you can actually get you can actually get citizenship for dreamers. 800,000 to 2 million dreamers. You can get citizenship for these people. These young people, I want them to become citizens. Democrats obviously don't. What are they waiting for? That's the issue here. The issue here is there are, there are goals and objectives that their constituents want. And all you hear is the hyperbole. Where is, I mean, you get this resolution, this Green New Deal resolution, and... Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez obliv is oblivious, absolutely oblivious to all the suffering and all the, um, all the lives lost mining cobalt and lithium and nickel, all the, um, the, the pollution in, the, in uh, land, water, air associated with mining these metals that electric cars need. So like the carbon footprint, the carbon footprint. Well, what about the human cost? They look, they're like, oh, we've debunked the carbon footprint issue. If you just drive at a certain um, amount, then 
the cost of making it uh, just evens out because it's something like 74% more uh, CO2. Okay, but what about the 35,000 children, according to The Guardian, in just one like giant cobalt mine in, in, the, in the Congo? Zero health standards. Some of these mines are radioactive, by the way. So, meanwhile, AOC is like, you gotta believe. It's like, they, they're the most uninspiring bunch of people between Bernie Sanders, who folded in two seconds. Like, that, that phrase, you could have been a contender. He could have been a contender. He could have actually done something heroic. Instead, he's like, oh, you cheated me? Okay, fine. Oh, yeah, Russia cheated. He's pushing the same myth. I mean, I go on forever, I go on forever about this. He's pushing the same myth that says he was part of a Russian plot. It's kind of so stupid. But U.S. Southern Command uh, General uh, Kelly calls U.S. border security, Latin America's broken societies, and insatiable American drug uh, use as existential threats to national security. Of course, we have something to do with it as well. We, as a country, consume. We're like the number one consumer of illegal narcotics in the world, or certain illegal narco narcotics. But, I mean, he goes on... In comparison to other global threats, the near collapse of societies in the hemisphere, with the associated drug and 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 okay, uh, human human being flows, uh, are frequently viewed to be of low importance. Many argue these threats are not existential and do not challenge our national security. I disagree. And then he talks about insurgents. Or there's another word for it. Starts with a T. Ends with an ist. YouTube policies. Don't want to say it, but he's he's talking about that. All this corruption and violence is directly or indirectly due to the insatiable U.S. demand for drugs, particularly cocaine, heroin, meth, Kelly told Defense One, all of which are produced in Latin America, smuggled into the U.S. along an incredibly efficient network along with anything. Hundreds of tons of drugs, people, insurgents, another word for that word I'm not using, potentially WMD, he says, even children. It's just this this notion that a wall is immoral when the immigration system, the is, is, is Democrats aren't even trying. Where's comprehensive immigration reform? Where's single payer? Where's Medicare for all? Where is this bill? Where is this miraculous? phantom of a bill of legislation where is this we get we have to listen to all the you know the pontificating oh my god oh my god oh this and that and this and that where is all of this uh, hit subscribe to this channel tell your friends about this channel um, we, we've got, we've gone through so much, you know, I was, the Huffington Post called me the biggest Bernie Sanders booster, no, yeah, on the internet, the Washington Post called me the unofficial scribe of Sanders' most hardcore voters, and now I'm supporting President Trump, why? Because whether you agree or disagree with him, he's not a fake and he's not a phony. And he's bringing home Americans from war. That's what drives me. I want all Americans back home from, from um, quagmires and conflicts and wars, perpetual, endless conflicts. I want them home, especially from the Middle East. I want them home. I want Americans home from war. That should drive everyone on the left. It doesn't. You know, you know what drives uh, people on the left? The anti-Israel, you know, hysteria. Hysteria. They bring up APAC. It's like, I'm not even going to get into it this segment. Read my article below. Why Democrats embrace anti-Semitism and anti-Israel bias. Sorry, when you focus on one side, only one side, and make it make it out to, to be that this side has, has seduced the planet, as one uh, congressional uh, Democrat stated. You're talking about some kind of 
it's it's not just a critique. It goes beyond just a critique. When you when you have people uh, saying things like, "Oh, these groups of people are hypnotizing," that's bizarre. But I explained that in my Jerusalem Post article. Big win for President Trump. And in terms of the the uh, when he declares a national emergency, they're not going to be able to stop it. So, a national emergency only the courts can stop. Co- Congress is not going to vote on a national emergency. He has the authority to do so. Um, and he has virtually unlimited money to work with in terms of the unobligated... Well, no, I should say, shouldn't say that. I saw a figure of $288 billion. But he has $13 billion um, for construction projects from the Army Corps of Engineers, I believe. But the Department of Defense has the money that he needs. Give me your thoughts below. Um, the only thing that could stop Trump is the, Supreme, is the Supreme Court. But if they're not even stopping, if they're not stopping this issue, I doubt they're going to stop. If the Ninth Circuit sides with Trump on an environmental issue, and the Ninth Circuit is more of a um, left-leaning court, then I doubt the Supreme Court is going to prevent Trump from declaring what actually is a national emergency. It's a national emergency. There are, and this is an issue of the trafficking of narcotics, the trafficking of everything from narcotics to human beings. I mean, this is an issue regarding crime, a major issue, a billion, multi-billion dollar issue. So give me your thoughts below. Hit subscribe right now. Thank you so very much. You want to see what's taking place in H.A. Second Amendment this week. Thank you so much. Especially, especially if you're into video games, Fortnite. I'm kind of giving a hint, but thank you so very much.